Hi everyone and welcome, it's Scarlet Pete here and Self Sufficiency. Today I'm teaching you about knitting machines a little bit more and we're doing the green tension ruler and how to make a tension swatch so we can design our own clothes. That's part of self sufficiency isn't it? Now then, can you see there my little green ruler? It has two sides. One says S on it which is for stitches the other side has R on it, which is for rows, and we use those to measure the tension swatch. So I thought we'll knit a tension swatch together now. When knitting a tension swatch, you're doing a sample of your fabric that you want to use. So we select tension dial for this, which is going to be 7. So on our piece of paper, we would write tension dial 7, and then we put an R and an S ready to receive the measurements. And what we want to stitch is we want a minimum of 60 uh, stitches, so I'm going to go for 32 stitches each side to cast on. And we need to do that over a 40 row length to measure within. But we really need to do a decent sized piece of fabric so that the yarn and the fabric um, behave as it would within the, within the, the garment. So you knit a swatch as a sample. And well, let's get on with it and I'll do it. So first of all, what I'm going to do, here's the pattern. We need to make 32 stitches each side. We're going to knit 20 rows of the cast on yarn, which is going to be the main yarn that we're going to do the um, garment in. This could be patterned, tuck stitch, fair isle, whatever, but it's all going to be, this whole piece of fabric here is going to be in the main yarn and the main pattern. So we knit 20 rows. And then on this point here, we knit two rows. Actually, I've made a mistake. Look, that should read 10, 20. There we are, I fixed that. So, 32 stitches each side, 20 rows of the fabric. And at this point, we're going to knit two or one row, but I normally use two rows, of a waste yarn. That's what this stands for. So it's cast on, 20 rows. At row 20, we stop. We knit two rows of waste yarn. And then we're going to put our row counter here back to zero. Then we're going to knit the swatch, which consists of 40 rows in total. And between one and three times, we're going to mark the 21st stitch. So we're measuring between 40 stitches here and 40 rows. We're going to do two rows of waste yarn, and then we're going to knit again on top. So I'm going to set the machine up now. Tension dial 7, we made a note of it. 32 stitches each side, and I'm just going to cast those on now. You can use your favourite cast on, you can do whatever you want. I've just done a normal E-wrap cast on there, and this is the second row here, knitted along. So I'm going to knit first 20 rows. Now, if you're going to be using weights, use them on your sample. Don't do anything different. Your sample in your swatch is all about creating the same conditions of the machine and the fabric, the, the yarn, all the same yarn to give you your rule for how many centimetres and stitches, how many stitches and centimetres. So I've done my 20 rows and now I'm going to put in my second colour and do two rows. Putting my main colour to one side and now putting the second colour in. Two rows knitted, time to put the row counter to zero, activate it. On this knit master it's just by putting that to the triangle and it's time to knit. I'm going to mark the 21st stitches on the 10th, 20th and 30 rows. I'll show you that in a moment. There we have the first 10 rows knitted and we're going to find the 21st needle, which is that one. And, oops, it's not showing you very clearly. 21, there. So between those needles that are out now, let me just double check. Yeah, between those needles that are out, we now have... 40 stitches and that's what we're going to measure between afterwards so I'm going to mark the 21st stitch on each side by getting a piece of waste yarn hooking it over on each side and just knitting a stitch that's it you might want to pull the stitch back out again just to make sure your machine's happy about stitching it and now I'm going to knit to row 20 and repeat and row 30 and repeat there are our three markers we've now got to row 40 so on row 40 
we need to knit two rows of waist yarn. So we've done the two rows of waist yarn, we've got the main colour in and I'm going to knit a further 20 rows now. There we are, a further 20 rows. Now it's time to throw that work off. All I'm going to do is break the yarn here, hold it above the carriage as I knit the final row across and it will knit halfway and I'll take the weights off and knit two rows to throw it off completely. Is that bright enough for you? So this is how it looks when it's come off the machine. And I'll just show you why we have to do the next step. So we get the R measurement. And if we start at the top of the orange going down to the bottom of the orange, we've got a measurement of, if my thing will let me focus, 60, 1, 2, 3, 63. Now then, what we next have to do is pull it lengthwise this in this direction because as it comes off the knitting machine it's very compressed um, we need to pull it and stretch it and then let it settle back now we stretched it you can see the stitches look longer and if we measure it you can see we now have 56 so it's gone from 63 to 56 cent stitch rows sorry per centimeter so now it's time to just let it settle. Some people may steam it. I sort of fiddle with it like that a little bit. Shake it and put it to one side for a little while. I'm going to measure this roughly in front of the camera now because I'm only holding it with one hand. So what we're going to do is follow one line of row of stitches. Put the, the tape measure, the green ruler, on that. You go to the top of the bit of the orange, to the bottom of the bit of the orange, and you measure it. And then the same again with stitches. Making sure you've got the arrows starting the right way. And you go between the markers and you me measure between the three markers, checking. I can't do this one handed. There we go. Checking you have the same measurement between the three markers or take a mean measurement between the three, which means take an average. So from my measurements and uh, time that's elapsed, it has given me a result of 56 rows equals 10 centimetres, 28 stitches equals 10 centimetres. So move the decimal point once to there, we get 5.6 rows is a 1 centimetre and 2.8 stitches is 1 centimetre. Now let me explain to you what we then do. I'll just do a quick description next on my board. Hope you like my artwork. So this is how the green ruler works. Now, you measure your human, a baby, a dog, whatever, adult, whatever you are making, you draw it out, whether it's a dog uh, blanket cover or a jumper. You measure how long you want it to be, how wide you want it to be, how deep till you want the armholes, wide the neck, and then those measurements give you twice of that, is the top of the sleeve, and the underarm measurement. So... Once we know, if say this was going to be 100 centimetres here, we would just say, right, I want to make 100 centimetres out of rows. So you do 100 times 5.6 rows, which equals... It's like being a teacher, this, with all this drawing on the board. So, 100 times 5.6. I wanted 100 centimetres long, excluding the welt at the moment, just the main body. 100 times 5.6 is 560 rows. So we know if we want to make 100 centimetres long, we're going to times it up by the 5.6 and get, we need to knit 560 rows. We wouldn't be doing that, but that's just to show you. If I want it 50 centimetres across there, I need to times the 50 by 2.8 stitches, which gives me a total of 140, 70 stitches each side. That's the very basics. There'll be another, another video on exactly how to do uh, jumpers. I hope this helps you and how you find out how to do a tension swatch. Take care, everyone. Keep well and safe. Stay along and subscribe. Watch for more. And give me a comment so I know you're there because I love getting comments. And then I got friends. Take care. Bye-bye.